Hi guys, thanks for coming back to another video. I appreciate y'all coming back. God bless you all. Guys, we're coming up to Christmas time. We are just about, what, a little over a week away now. And I can tell you I am waiting with great anticipation for the timing of our Christmas day. Um, why? Well, because the Lord has been giving me some confirmation of some things um, that he has said in the past. Um, if you've been watching this channel for a while, some of the things that I'll be sharing with you today, you will recognize and remember um, that has been shared. And if you'd like to go back and rewatch some of this information again, you can go back and scroll back in my channels and see uh, what the Lord has been talking about. Um, in the past, he has brought up the pearl, and he has brought up Christmas songs, and he has brought up the islands. Uh, so we want to talk a little bit about that. We want to talk a little bit about, too, about the Lord, uh, what he has said about the three days. Um, he has just brought this up to my attention again, and I want to talk with you all about that as well. I also want to share some uh, information uh, in regards to some things that the Lord has confirmed with the experience in the last video. Um, the, the experiences that a lot of us are uh, in the process of having, um, we are in the process of being birthed, guys. And when you go into the birthing process, um, you have to go through labor, and labor is very intensive, it's very hard, it's very painful, it's full of trial and, um, and um, pain. And so uh, I just want to say that, you know, hang in there, guys, and continue to walk forward, okay? Um, the Lord told us many videos back, and I shared this, that we were going to go through a really hard time, but then there would be abundance. Then there would be Him, okay? So um, keep moving, keep pressing forward, and just know that He is with you, and also know this as well. Um, when I was reaching out to him and crying out to him about, Lord, I don't think I can take another step. When I was moving through some of that, um, he said, then I will carry you. Now, guys, you can go into Isaiah and find that scripture. He will carry you. OK, so you can rely upon your Lord to help you. I had another sister in Christ reach out to me, one that is in the throes of um, walking out her purpose for these times. She identifies and recognizes who she is at this time, um, and she's having some really tough uh, some really tough times and some really painful times at this time. Um, she reached out to me and the message that I would like to share um, with you is a personal conversation that I shared with her. I felt led to do it. Um, it was a conversation that was between myself and the Lord and what he was encouraging me about in regards to what I was walking through. Um, most recently, and I felt really, really strongly to share this with her in hopes that it would encourage her. Um, there are many others, the Lord has said, you are one of many, okay, that will come forth, that will be showing his love and his spirit and his light. Um, and so I know I'm not the only one. She is another that is walking through those uh, that pathway as well. Um, and there are many others. The Lord said in a message, and, and I shared that in the last video, that I was one of many. I had some come against that and basically said, well, you know, there's only one bride. Um, guys, you know, when I share a message from the Lord, then it's a message from the Lord. Uh, and I'm not real sure who some, some of you think you're arguing with or trying to prove your point, but... I have shared the words from the Lord, so um, so I would say be very careful uh, about who you're attacking or who you're uh, trying to discount somebody's truthful words. Um, I've gone to the Lord about it many, many times, and it is not just me, and he's been giving me visions of it for quite some time. You know, we are one church. There is one church that is going to come forth. Um, that is correct. There's one church, but a church is made up of many different people. Okay. The bride is made up of men and women, not just women. 
okay? The virgins are made up of more than just women. They're men and women. The color white is one color, but it's made up of all colors, okay? So I need you to be very careful about that and seek the Lord on that, please, okay? I've shared the messages that he's given me. So when you, when you say stuff like, you know, in an attacking manner to me, that there's only one bride, you know that for sure. Guys, I just have to say, you know, you need to seek the Lord on that, okay? Um, what a very sad thing it would be if there was only one person in all of creation, 6,000 years, that could be constituted as the bride. Um, that's not quite right, okay? So I just want to talk to you in terms of what that message was, and I'm hoping it's going to be very confirming for others that are walking through these difficult times. Um, it's very interesting what the Lord said to me. Um, I was driving. Um, I was in prayer. Uh, I knew to reach for my phone. He was getting. He was starting to talk with me. I needed to capture what he was saying to me. Um, and this is what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this around. Hopefully it will work this time. And uh, we can go ahead and talk about this message. The message was given to me on December the 11th. And it says, my love for you is enormous, magnified to the greatest extent possible, to be seen with the naked eye beyond the measure of any human being. My love is cast upon you in those realms where eyes cannot see and ears cannot hear. The silence of my love. It is upon you now, my dear one, adorned for all to see. And when you come forth unto the many, they will see and know what I have spoken over you since the dawn of time. My dove, hear me now and know that the words that I speak unto you are true. Stand tall, my little one, and rest not in the words that come against you from others, for they shall know the truths in due time. You have come far, my little one, far from the edges of eternity to where you are now, to begin your new life with me. You are mine. You, we are one for all time, together, you and I. Can you not see this? Can you not know from the experiences that I have come unto you, selected you, chosen you as my very own? I am yours. You are mine. Together for all time. Can one not know the areas of my affection for you? Have they not heard me call your name from the outer edges, the outer halls, to come forth unto me? You have shared these things, Yet they see them not, they hear them not, they choose not to, my love, for they know not, and have decided against it. When the way is formulated, when the talk is done, when the lights have dimmed, and all have gone, then, and only then, will they know and understand that the words that I have spoken unto you have been truth that you have shared so eloquently in times past. And furthermore, I shall grant you these things. I am yours, you are mine, and we are together for all time, for eternity, for oneness within the realms. I can come to get you at any time, my child, and pull you back with me into the spirit, into my kingdom realm forevermore. Your purposes have come to be. They will be shown and known unto many. And until that time, you shall walk forth boldly, old child of mine, for you are mine and I have called you by my name. Hold fast now to the words that I have said unto you, for they are truth. They are life to your bones, light, love, peace, joy in the spirit. For I am your food, your drink, your way forevermore. My love, listen to me now. You shall come forth in great glory. You shall bring forth unto the masses the words that I speak unto you, so that they may hear the things that you hear, so that they may see the things that you see, 
so that they may think the things that you have been thinking. These things are given unto you by my hand, directly from me, should they wonder who has given them unto you. I am yours, you are mine. Trust not in the words of men. Trust not in the images that you see, for things of this world are not as they seem. Come forth unto me, ah, ah, come forth unto me to adorn you. Allow my comfort upon you, for I shall take your hand and lead you through mighty ways, mighty passages. There are times coming where one must be able to hear my voice, to follow me wherever I go. This, my dove, you will do. Your love for me is enormous. I can see that it is so. I have read your heart, my child, and know these things to be true. I have listened to your words, your thoughts, your heart. I know what is being said. Listen not, and heed not unto the words that are told to you by those scoffers who have not taken the time to invest in who I am, much less who they claim to be. I am yours. You are mine. Have I not said this enough? Do you hear me now, O child of mine, that we are adorned together, united, a front united? I have come far to be with you, O child of mine. Among the masses I have been waiting for others to turn. There are times that are coming when the timing must be accelerated. I am coming forth among my chosen ones to show others the way. Shalom. So that was, uh, that was the message that I received in a personal prayer uh, in conversation with the Lord that I just happened to document down. And when this sister reach out, reached out to me the other day, um, I was just almost compelled to send that message to her. It was just such a strong um, thing to do. So, you know, guys, you're going to be walking through some stuff. If you are the ones that are being called forth right now at this time and you're walking out your purposes and you know who you are and you know what your purposes are and things are getting really, really hard for you right now, um, that is the way that it's supposed to be. Okay, that is the way it is supposed to be. We are supposed to walk it out. And it's tough, guys. I know it's tough. I've cried out many, many, many times to the Lord myself. Um, but guys, you're going to get to a point where it's it's going to lessen. Okay? You're going to get to a point where it's going to lessen. And I don't know if, it, if I've gotten just to a lull within the labor process, you know, where the contractions have stopped for a little while, or if I'm toward the end of something. I'm not real sure. Um, but I know this, that there's been there's a, been a little bit of a breathing space, a, a, bre a lull, okay? Um, but guys, I just, I just want to encourage you to let you know, you know, we, we are in the palm of his hand and he is guiding us and getting us there. Um, and that is what our prayers have been. I'm sure that's what your prayers have been. I know that's what my prayers have been for many, many, many years. Lord, just get me there. Uh, show me the path, show me the way, make sure I understand it, just get me there, you know. Um, so we've got a lot of things going on right now, and I get it, but if you're walking through some tough times, you're you're on his pathway, okay? You're on his pathway. So um, since that experience that I shared with you all uh, in my last video, I've I've been talking to the Lord about confirmation and I've been trying to do some researching and some studies myself. He has led me to some things that has confirmed uh, a couple of, actually it's confirmed a lot of different things. Um, but as I've gone through reading documents and different um, writings and uh, things that have been provided that I have been led to, really I didn't even know who some of these people were. Um, I really haven't taken any notes except to notate where I found the information. So I really haven't done any of that in-depth study for research for you guys. But, um, but guys, I'm just here to tell you that the Lord is just confirming 
the experience, what has happened, and all the way through. <clears throat> but I did have another experience. This happened on the 2nd of December um, that tied in with the other experience. And I want to share that with you as well because this one kind of scared me a little bit. Um, I did not know what was happening. I was asleep in my bed. And I was on my side facing the middle of the bed. So my back was toward the edge of the bed and I was sound asleep. And all of a sudden, within my sleep, I felt someone holding me, coming behind me to hold me down, like to hold me down. And I just started fighting in my sleep. I was, I was trying to fight. I was trying to tap my husband who was on the side of the bed to wake him up. I was trying to yell um, his name, but for some reason my lips weren't moving. I was like, mm, you know, just trying to say his name. Um, and I was really starting to panic and wrestle in the spirit in the, in my, I was waking out of this dream. Um, and all of a sudden it backed off, the pressure backed off. Um, and I was really glad about that, but then it came right back and it held me down again. Um, but as it was holding me down again and I was starting to panic, I saw in the spirit this lit round mass. I'm going to say mass because I don't think it was physical. I happened to see it coming down. Um, it looked like it was an oval and it had like, like a lit edge edges to it. And it was coming right down upon my head. Okay. Um, I don't know if it was just lit as a light around it or if it was a fire or if it was a hot. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but it was an oval with with a light like a like light around it. And it was coming right down upon my head. Now. I didn't know what it was, but as soon as that came down upon my head, it was almost like a portal opened up and I could see um, I was given a vision and the vision was the most clear, vivid um, vision I have ever seen. It was full color, deep color. It was it was amazing. So let me tell you what it was. I saw a classroom. OK, the classroom, um, this room that had these desks in it was very bright. Um, it was very bright. It wasn't like that. It was sunny in there, but it was very bright. Um, and all of these desks were all in rows and they were facing me and they all were. I could just I knew for some somehow they were all brand new desks. OK, but the colors that I saw and the vivid detail of everything in this vision, this was the clearest vision I have ever seen. I had I mean, I just I had no idea why I was being shown this. But when that thing came down upon my head, OK, um, I then was given this vision. So I want to turn this around. I, I have an image here I want to show you um, that um, I found here it is online just to show you what that vision looked like. You can see the lights on the floor here, so you know that this is a lit room. It's very bright, but, but in my vision, it was extremely bright, and these desks were all facing me um, in a row like this. Now, what is really interesting is, is these desks that are in this picture are like two pieces. I'm talking about the desks that you sat in that had the arm come in the desk. It was all like one piece. These were all in rows, perfectly new, pristine rows. Um, and so the only thing that I know about that, I haven't been given any information about it. And truly, I have not even sought anything out about it. Um, was that we're getting ready to be taught some stuff. I, I would imagine the, the higher truths, uh, all of the information that we're being given by the Lord and by the Spirit from directly from heaven is what we're going to be learning. Now, guys, we we know about this. There's going to be some that are going to be getting information directly from heaven. Um, 
there's going to be some that are going to have to share it. There's going to be some that um, are, you know, are going to have to present it in some way. But this is all the new church information. This is everything that the Lord is creating for himself for these end times. This is the new stuff. OK, this is we, we know that there were going to be some that was going to be able to go back and forth to heaven to, to get the information, to bring it down here to earth. Um, we, we know all about that. How that was going to happen, we didn't know. But we know that it is being done even now as we're speaking. Uh, and the sister that reached out to me, she is also one that has some that is being given unto us. And I'm not talking about, you know, just words and messages. I'm talking about new truths, okay, higher knowledge, spiritual truths and wisdom that is being given to us to to give out um and the only problem with that is is that you know it doesn't align with some folks that have it doesn't align with some folks that have been listening to man made or man's uh, interpretation of scripture or man's uh, understanding of uh, of things it's it's a little different um, because let me back it up when you look at the Bible there's many levels to under there's many levels of understanding right you can look at the Bible and read it and it looks like a historical document does it not is it not like a, a history, right? Or you can look at it and understand that there's more than one understanding to something. Uh, case in point, Jesus spoke in parables. Okay? Why did he speak in parables? Well, when he's speaking, people will say, oh, it's a parable, it's a parable, it's a riddle, it's this, it's that. No, it's truth. But from what understanding you're able to comprehend it is the difference, right? So you can see it in a physical way or you can see it in a spiritual way. You can see it in a lower uh, truth of wisdom or you can see it in a higher uh, perception of wisdom. Um, there are many, many levels here, many layers to the understanding of everything. And that is what we're talking about. We're not saying one is this or one is that, but there is a time now, okay, case in point, that message where people need to start hearing from the Lord so that they can follow him wherever he goes. Um, I found that very interesting that he said that to me because all last year when he was teaching me, when I was going into the spirit and he was teaching me things, there were times that I entered into the spirit. I couldn't see him. I, I didn't. He wasn't anywhere around and I was supposed to follow his voice. I had to go find him. And he was teaching me in the spirit uh, how to go forth and do that. So, and I shared all of that, guys. You can go back and look at some of these things and then talk to the Lord about it. Ask him about it because he is bringing us up, up certain levels that he needs us to be at this time. So, guys, even in that message, it says it's almost time for time to start accelerating. Now, we know the Bible speaks of that. Um, you know, guys, I, I need for you to seek the Lord on these things, Okay. But there are those that are hearing from heaven, being mandated by God to do something, provide something, present something. Okay? Um, and not everybody is going to agree with it because of their level of wisdom and their level of understanding. There's going to be great conflict, as a matter of fact, between what all is coming down now from heaven and what is being understood in the earth, in, in the church today. Um, I know that for a fact. I have a lot of people coming against me. Um, many others that are walking out and providing the information that is being given from, from the Lord himself are experiencing a lot of the same things as well. So, so guys, don't be so quick to judge. Don't be so quick to jump on the bandwagon, okay? I need for you to listen with your heart 
and to ask the Lord about these things. And again, and I've said this before, if you don't understand what I'm saying right now, put me on the back burner, okay? Go into prayer, go into study, ask the Lord to help open your ears, your eyes, send you somewhere so that you can get some additional information as to maybe what I'm talking about, and then come back and listen to me again. I did have one person that's, that did that, as a matter of fact. She said one time last year she listened to my videos. She didn't understand a word I was saying, and it wasn't until she came back six, eight months later, maybe maybe a year later, that she started understanding exactly what I was talking about. Okay, and so, and that started to feed her spirit. So, um, so guys, take it to the Lord, okay? Please seek confirmation from Him. Please ask Him to lead you to where you can understand some of these things if you are not understanding it at this time. It's very important that you do, okay? All right, so we shared the message. Um, I shared that other experience. So I asked the Lord, I'm like, Lord, what was this all about? What, what, why were you holding me down? And this is what he told me. He said, love has now been locked in. That's what he said. He said, love has now been locked in. So now let me go back to the video before where there was that, um, there was the impregnation of love that will bloom forth like a rose. Okay, do you remember all of that? And if you haven't seen it, you need to go back and listen to it. Okay, so now he's telling me that love has now been locked in. Okay, well, I wasn't real sure what that was. That thing came down upon my head. Um, and the Lord did not go into detail as to what that was, but I'm wondering, I had a thought that came to me. Was I being sealed? Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly. Um, I haven't gotten full clarity on it, um, but love was being locked in. And I also asked the Lord, I'm like, well, who was holding me down? Because now I have to tell you, I was very upset about this. I was I was very upset about First off, I was very afraid. So um, if I get that afraid, that fearful about something, um, I get very angry. Uh, it's just what happens. You know, you know, the root of anger is fear, right? And I had to go to the Lord about it the next day because I was still angry and frustrated over it. I wasn't getting the answers that I needed to have. I mean, love was now locked in. Well, why did it have to be locked in? What what was that all about? I didn't understand it. And who was holding me down? You know, um, I was given the understanding. Gabriel held me down. And so I turned and I asked Gabriel. Uh, I couldn't see him, but I, I put it out there. And I'm like, well, why were you holding me down? Because uh, I was upset. You know, why were you holding me down? And, uh, and he said, I, I do as I'm asked. Uh, what are you going to say to that? <laughs> When, when God, the creator of all things, asks, asks you to, 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 to assist him in something, um, you know, what could I say? I wasn't going to say anything. Um, I talked with the Lord in great detail about it the next day in tears. I was still very upset about it. Lord, why couldn't you have warned me about this? You know, um, I was still very upset about it. And he said to me, do you actually think I would allow something to harm you at this point? That's what he told me. And I had to reply to him, no, I don't. But I, but I do know that you allow things to happen and you turn them for our good. And so that was my concern. And I was, I was very upset about it. I'm, I'm much better with it now. <laughs> I've had to um, sit and talk with him about it. And, of course, he gave me that message after that experience. The experience, that second part of the experience was on January, um, December the 2nd. And that message that I shared with you was on the 11th. So um, the only thing that I can think it might have been was I was being sealed on my forehead um, and if that's not it, it it may possibly not be it I have no idea but I was able to see with great clarity so I don't know what all comes along with love being locked in but I was able to see with great clarity um, so I wanted to share that I do have a couple of other things that I want to share with you as well 
Um, let me turn this around and see if I can pull up a couple of things. I've been talking with the Lord about um, um, there's been a couple of things that have come up in my uh, in my discussions with the Lord. The Lord has been bringing back to my memory um, a certain things that has been told to me in the past. Um, I want to talk with you about December the 7th. This was a particular morning that I got up at 5 o'clock in the morning and my grandson was already up and he was watching something on television. So I had made some coffee and sat down with him and he opted to go and do something else and said, you can go ahead and change the channel. So while I was um, just kind of channel surfing, I stopped at the Travel Channel and, um, and I was looking at something about the Turks and Caicos because I used to work with someone um, whose father owns a hotel in that area. But it was toward the end of the segment and a new, um, a new, uh, something new was coming on at the half hour or whatever. And it turned out to be, it was talking about the Pearl of the Pacific. Now, when I heard the word Pearl, uh, immediately my ears perked up um, because if you guys remember the Lord has been talking about pearls uh, with me for for many years as a matter of fact um, we shared a couple of things about the hem of the pearl we've shared about um, um, we shared about the um, the pearl monument um, we know that pearl means wisdom uh, we shared about the, the Pearl of Great Price. Um, and so we know a, a lot of things about the, the Pearl that the Lord has showed us. And interesting that he has showed us about these things all at the same time of year, year after year after year. Now, we've been talking about that in the past. Um, if you guys have been keeping a journal and you're not aware of what I've been saying, every year, the same time of the year, the Lord will bring up certain things that he has brought up the year prior at that same time of the year. Um, so it's interesting that he's bringing up the pearl now. He brought up the pearl in December um, the last several years as well. So while I was listening to about the pearl of the Pacific, it was talking about the island of Bora Bora. And so when I went in to look at some information about Bora Bora, um, the island was called Pora Pora, my Tepora, meaning created by the gods. Now, this was often abbreviated Pora Pora, meaning firstborn. Um, so I thought that was really, really interesting. And why would I think that's interesting? Because... The Lord has been pointing us to an island. He's been talking to us about a tropical island for many, many years. Um, this one particularly called the Pearl of the Pacific. He's been pointing us to the Pearl for at least three years. Um, now this coming up, me being up at five o'clock in the morning, which is very, very rare. I don't normally get up at five o'clock in the morning for me to be sitting in front of the television at five o'clock in the morning is even more rare for me to be flipping through the channels and actually have, um, actually have the remote in my hand is another rarity, especially when there's a kid in the house. Um, and then, you know, to even hear that this is the Pearl of the Pacific. When I go and take a look at it, I'm looking at this. It's saying created by the gods and that it means firstborn. So guys, you know, there is no, there is no coincidence. I've, I've told you all this time and time and time again. There is no such thing as coincidence. The Lord got me up. He led me to this. He wanted me to see it. And here it is. So, Recall that the Lord has been talking us about the islands. Um, remember the song, Two Tickets to Paradise. Um, others were looking for tickets as well. Um, and I've talked about tickets before, and I've even talked about this song before. Um, but most recently, the Lord has said to me in the night, um, he said to me, you will be gone for three days. So, um, my thought has moved along to that process. Is this the three days of darkness? Is that when the, the time that the light leaves? Is that why it's called the three days of darkness? 
You know, guys, I don't really know, but I know on the heels of the message he gave on the 11th, I would say it's a possibility. Um, so here is Bora Bora, which is very interesting. It is an island. Um, it is. It appears to be the top of some type of uh, maybe volcano or whatever, and you can see the outer crater edge here. Um, and then the island itself in here and several other little pieces. Here's a more of a satellite view. Take a look at this. Now, I want to tell you what's really interesting is that the Lord had led me, um, and I shared it in another video. Um, let me pop this back around. That the Lord had led me to the circles, okay? And the circles within the circles, we looked at the United Nation emblem. We looked at what the possibility of the island of Atlantis might look like. Um, we also looked at the um, some of the Greek islands, what's over there about those outer rings and, the, and some of the, the smaller other things that they have. Uh, islands with water. It's circle parts of land within the water. Um, and you can go back to that video and look at it, or you can just search it out for yourself. But interesting how this turned out. It's got the outer edge around it, and then the water within, and then still the island. So he is pointing us to these kinds of things. And I need just, you know, when he gives you some information, never discount what he's giving you because this stuff is right here. And it's all starting to tie in with some of the other stuff that he has shown us as well. So um, I just want to show you this because um, I just went through and did a search. So this shows you that the Bora Bora is the Pearl of the Pacific. That's what they've been talking about. Um, and um, you can go in and take a look at some of this stuff yourself. But I do want to show you, um, let me do this. I do want to show you here, um, so not only was I talking about the island and that it means it's created by God and it also means firstborn, but the icing on the top of the cake is the island of Bora Bora houses the area of Viatape and or Viatape. Um, this is always held a place of importance on Bora Bora. The word means... The place where bodies are taken at maturity. The place where bodies are taken at maturity. Um, you just can't make this stuff up, guys. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. And there is no such thing as coincidence. So... Here it is that the Lord is showing me all of this, and he's telling me, and I'm sitting there saying, I need confirmation, Lord. I need confirmation. What is going on? And then this. Uh, he gets me up at 5. He tells me, I listen. It's the pearl, and all ties into everything else, and here we are. The place where bodies are taken at maturity. We've been talking about us growing to get to a level of maturity. We've been talking about that. So guys, go to the Lord. You need to ask him for confirmation. I'm going to turn this back around. There's some things I want to show you here. Um, here's where Bora Bora is, where that where that little uh, red pin is, and that is where that Viatape, or however you pronounce it, is right there. Um, guys, amazing, amazing stuff. All right, so as always, really wanting to be sure of things, I asked for another confirmation, and I said, Lord, if this is true and we're going to the islands, let me know. And then on the 16th, I went into a grocery store that I don't normally go into since it's kind of out of my way, but I was going to buy a birthday cake for my husband. And this, this place really makes some good cakes and wanted to get his favorite. So while I was waiting in line, I heard a song overhead, and I was really made to take note of this song. Um, I want you to listen to it for just a moment if you can. It's by the Andrew Sisters. How'd you like to spend Christmas on Christmas Island? 
How'd you like to spend a holiday away across the sea? Okay, so and that is the song that I heard overhead, and these are the lyrics that go with it. But now, guys, I have to tell you, this is the same song over the last several years. Melikaliki Maka, that is one. Two tickets to paradise. Aloha E. Auld Lang Syne. These are all those particular songs that have been given to us over the years. Um, all right at this time, um, you can go back to the videos. I've provided them for you because at that timing, these were things that the Lord was giving us to encourage us um, and to point to a particular time. And that timing is now, guys. That timing is now. Okay. So in the beginning of this video, I said to you, we're only about a week away from Christmas, and I'm really getting excited to see what this particular timing is going to bring. Um, the Lord is showing us some things, and he's pointing us to some things. Again, another thing that I need for you to go to the Lord with confirmation about, okay? Go to him for confirmation. Let's continue on down my notes here. So three days, um, three days. Let me let me talk to you about those three days. So I was laying in bed most recently, and I was asking the Lord, Lord, can you confirm what it is that you've been trying to tell me about the island and everything else with that? And um, and I was laying in bed, and He said, You will be gone for three days. So now is that three days like here, earthly time, or is that three days heaven in heavenly time? Or um, the Bible says a day is like a year. Are we looking at three years? Um, you know, guys, I really don't know. I have no idea. But if he says you're going to be gone for three days, then that obviously means you're coming back. So um, we have work to do. We have things to do. But, um, but he is bringing that up. So is that the timing? Uh, is that the timing of the island? Um, you know, I don't know. And a lot of people say, well, you know, the three days of darkness, it's this, it's that. Light leaves, guys. Light leaves. That's the darkness. Because light holds off some of that darkness. And so when light leaves, it is darkness. And we've, we've talked about this. We've talked about what Isaiah says. Uh, in regards to the darkness. Is it Isaiah 60 or 61? I'm not sure, but it talks about the darkness. And the Lord told me about that darkness. It's a heavy darkness. It looms. It's thick and it's hard to get away from. Um, so we know we've talked about that in our videos too and what we need to do and, and be careful about um, during the darkness if we're here. So, um, so guys, I just wanted to share that with you. Some of the other confirmations that I have um, received in regards to um, the experiences that I've had, um, I do want to talk with you about a couple. I'm not going to give you all of them, um, but I have had quite a few more confirmed. So I do want to say this, that when I made mention in my last video that I had to give my consent to the question of marriage, um, that he made sure I was not endowed and that I did not hesitate but gave my wholehearted consent. It was then that those um, that experience took place. And um, so I wanted to say that I was led to this guy right here who had, and I was browsing over some of his writings, and this is what it said. Um, Someone was asking about the marriage, and it said, um, Is it not proper that a priest should be present and minister in these ceremonies? Now, this is talking about the heavenly marriage. And the wise man answered, It is proper on earth, but not in the heavens, on account of the representation of the Lord himself and the church. This is not known on earth, and even with us, a priest ministers at betrothals and hears and receives, confirms, and consecrates the consent. Look what it says here. The consent is the essential of marriage, and the other things that follow are its formalities. So it's the consent that is the essential thing for the marriage with us, with the Lord. It, it's the consent 
Recall that I said I got asked three times, I screwed up twice. I finally was able to tell him yes, yes, a thousand times yes. And that was the one time that I did it with no doubt, no question, no hesitation. So I said that he waited, I, he waited for that consent. That was the other thing I had to say yes to. Um, and that was information that I shared in that last video. This confirmed it. This confirmed it. And so I was really, really excited to see that. Um, there are also other things in regards to the tabernacle, because we were talking about us being the final temple and that, and that we are impregnated with love. Well, who is love? God is love, right? And so we also talked about all of those visions where, you know, I saw thousands of Jesus, right? Um, and I talked about that particular vision uh, in the past, and I started laughing, and the Lord says, you find that funny? And I said, yes, I do, because the enemy can't even take one of you, much less all of that. And so, um, so we talked about him coming within us, and that was going to be his second coming, coming within us. Um, and I've had a lot of people fight me on that as well. But guys, I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, I believe that's what it is. It's the new, it's the new church. It's the new way. It's his way, not the way of man, not the perception of man, not the wisdom of man, not the understanding of man. Okay. It is him. And this information is being given to us directly from heaven. Okay. Let me turn this around. I want to talk to you about this tabernacle because we talked about this. The tabernacle is the movable temple. Okay, We are that tabernacle or that final temple. We talked about that in the last video. Scriptures to support him in us. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them. And behold, he will make all things new. Okay, so this is all new stuff that's coming now. This is not old stuff. We've moved on. We've moved on. We're in the process of moving on now. Um, and so I found this also in this book, Compendium of the Theological and Spiritual. It says a holy man was also denominated a tent, a tabernacle, or a temple of the Lord. That a tent, tabernacle, and temple having the same signification is evident from what is written by David when he said, One thing I have desi desired of Jehovah that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of Jehovah all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of Jehovah and to inquire in his temple. For in the days of trouble, or in the days of yet yeah, trouble, he shall hide me in his tabernacle. In the secret of his tent, he shall hide me. He shall set me upon a rock and know. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. And I shall offer in his tent sacrifices of shouting. So here, this information that David is saying, he is equating the tent, the tabernacle and the temple as being as being the same thing so um, so guys I just want to I just wanted to go ahead and present some of the things that I have been seeing and understanding at this time um, encourage those that are walking out their purposes and walking through some really really tough times and, and in, in great uh, areas of pain at this time guys I just want to tell you that I I will encourage you and uplift you in prayer um, if you want to reach out to me, please do so, so that I can include you in prayer and what is going on, um, that the Lord will go before you and clear the path for you. We know that he will do that. Um, guys, I ask for all of the other information that I have provided for you, that you seek him on it um, sincerely with your whole heart, without preconceived thought, okay? New truths are coming out right now. New truths and wisdom is coming out right now. And those that are being selected to pull it out or to provide it to you or to present it to you in some way, form or fashion, um, you need to be ready for it. OK, don't go toward it with a preconceived thought or notion in your mind that he's not speaking anymore, that he doesn't give dreams, that, you know, what have you. Um, he is speaking and he has chosen some to hear directly from heaven and to bring it forth. 
So with that, I'm going to leave you with this video. Thank you so much for coming back. God bless you all. Um, if you've got any prayer requests, please send me an email. I will go ahead and certainly include you in prayer. God bless you all. And until I see you again.